All right, welcome back everyone. So we're now working on part seven of our tutorial series on how to use Autodesk Inventor so that we can 3D model a box for our water piano project. So in the last six videos, we finished the box. And so in this video, we're gonna start to make the top for it. So we're gonna start by clicking up here and make a new part It's just a standard part. And we're gonna start with a 2D sketch on the XZ plane like before. So first up, we're going to get a two-point center rectangle started right at the origin, so that green dot's showing up again. And I'm going to type in the dimensions. So the first dimension is going to be 2.375, or 2 and 3 eighths. And our second dimension will be 2.33. Okay. And so we'll finish that sketch and extrude it. And so obviously not one inch. We're going to do that just an eighth of an inch, like all the other walls, or 0.125. So there we go. Now we got the base of our uh, top part that we're going to make. So step two is something new. We're going to go right here where it says origin. Click on that little arrow. And here where the XY plane is, the thing that we've been mirroring a whole bunch of other uh, little parts off of, we're going to right click that and check the visibility button. So then that means that the XY plane is going to show up for us and it's going to stay there until we make it invisible again. And so this is important because our next 2D sketch is going to be on that plane. So you can start a 2D sketch on any face that you've made or if you want to put these planes up, you can make those. Uh, if you want to get more advanced, there's ways to just make your own plane. Uh, in whichever direction you want. So it doesn't have to be going X, Y, or, uh, you know, exactly 90 degrees one way or another. Um, but we'll worry about that at another time. So on our X, Y plane, we're going to make a circle. And we're going to start the circle right where that middle plane hits the corner of our part. And just drag it up until the dot turns green and we have a quarter inch circle there. Okay. So we'll finish that sketch. Then next up, we're going to extrude this part. Now, instead of just going out in one direction, what we're going to do is go symmetrically. So what this means is that our part's going to go out in either direction just as far. So we want this to be 1.75, which is nearly the same size as our uh, hole for the box here, except this one's uh, 1.8. So we have just a tiny little bit of wiggle room. Uh, for clearance so that our box can actually hinge. Okay, so now that we got that, um, we need to take off a little bit of this corner here. Because you can imagine if we're trying to fit it in and rotate it around here, we need a little bit of clearance. So we're going to start a 2D sketch on this flat plane here. Okay, and we're going to make a rectangle, except this one's going to be a two-point rectangle. And get that corner there where the dot turns green, and pull it up and over until right there. So, if you didn't see the dimensions there, it's 0.125 or one-eighth of an inch, basically the width of our round part here. And it goes up as far as the last part that we made. So let's finish that sketch. And let's extrude that part. Uh, we don't want it coming out. We want it to cut through. And distance, well, we don't really need it to go that far. We could just type in 0.125 and it would cut through that much. Or, you know, we could go to the next plane. Uh, but typing in the distance sometimes is just the quicker way to go. So now we need this on the other side. So let's just mirror that feature. So there's nothing there. What exactly are we going to be mirroring? Well, if you kind of click on that face right there, it knows that that extrusion came out of that. And we mirror that right on the XY plane, hit OK, voila. So now we have this little bit cut away on either side. Okay. Uh, so next up, we have enough clearance. I mean, it's kind of clearing the circle here, but it's not completely clearing it. So we're just going to add a couple little fillets in just to give it a little bit of extra space. So we want this to be 0 0.0625 or 1 16th of an inch. And let's zoom in a bit. We're going to get that corner and that corner. And this one and this one. 
And while we're at it, oh, sorry for the zooming in too much, uh, we're also going to get this one. So that's just going to add a little bit of strength so that our cylinder here doesn't end up cracking off with the rest of our top. All right, and then we hit OK. So now it's starting to take shape. We have a top, we have a cylinder where our screws are going to go. Next up, we need to make a hole for our screws to actually fit into. So we're going to make a 2D sketch just right on that face right there. And we should be able to just make a point right in the middle of that circle right there. Okay, finish that sketch. We'll make a hole. A quarter inch hole through a quarter inch cylinder. I don't think that's going to work very well. So let's change that. This one's going to be point 0.1. So our screw is going to be screwing into this part. So a point 0.1 would be just enough room for the shaft of the screw to fit through, but not the threads of it. So it's actually going to bite in. And... Of course, we could go to the next face, or we could go through the distance, or if we just hit through all, it'll go through everything, because we want that hole to go through everything. Radio. So now we got something that can pivot, something that'll have clearance everywhere. The only thing we're kind of missing is some kind of locking mechanism. So, I mean, we could attach a latch on the outside, but then you're going to see a latch on the outside. Uh, so why don't we try to make something which will latch, and if we do this in a clever way, we can hide it on the inside. So what I'm going to do is start a new 2D sketch on this bottom face here. And the first step is going to be making a line right up from the top corner down, and it's going to go down 0.3 inches. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to make one perpendicular to that coming out, and that's going to come out 0.13 inches. So after that, we make a little rectangle. It's a two-point rectangle like this. And so our first dimension is going to be 0 0.08. Hit tab, and then the next dimension will be 0 0.18. And then finish that sketch and extrude that part. And we want it to come out 0.4 inches. Okay. So we made this 0.13 inches away from the edge. And our walls are 0.125. So that's just, just enough space for it to uh, slide in when it pivots. Except, well, if you kind of think about the angle we've got going on here, if the box lid is up this high and it wants to kind of come in, it's not actually going to fit. It's just going to sit on the top of it. So we need to cut a little bit away from this part here. So the first thing that I'm going to do, um, also because this is kind of in the way of our speaker, uh, we're just going to add a little bit of a chamfer onto this corner right here. You want it to be one eighth of an inch, 0.125, just on that edge right there. And so that's going to make uh, the end of our holding latch just a little bit thinner, which will hopefully make it just a little bit more springy. And hit OK. And then we need some kind of a rounded over part so that it can actually uh, hit the edge. And then it hits the round part and it snaps into place. So we're going to use a fillet of 1 16th or 0 0.0625. We're going to get that edge. We're going to get that edge and hit OK. And so now if you think about this part springing back and forth, it's just a flimsy little piece of plastic. It's 0 0.08 inches wide, so I mean this is going to break fairly easily. So we're going to add one more fillet. This one's going to be a little bigger. How about 0 0.1 inch? Okay, and right there. So that's going to give this piece just a little bit more strength so that hopefully it doesn't crack off on us. Alright. Now, oh we only got one. Well then, why don't we just mirror this part across the plane there? Okay. Oh, would you look at that? All of the chamfers and fillets didn't go with it. So let's just hit Control Z and get rid of that for a second. So what if we mirrored this part? Zoom in a little bit. We mirror that chamfer, or that, uh, that fillet, I should say, and we hit this line there to get that chamfer and we hit that fillet there. We mirror it on that plane. Well, there we go. Now we got all our parts. So if you were wondering why I wasn't uh, 
filleting all the parts before mirroring them in the other videos. This is why, because uh, for whatever reason, the mirror feature doesn't really like to add the fillets and whatnot in there. The fillets kind of like an add-on, uh, just to round out the corners and, uh, well, just something that you add on to individual pieces, I guess. I'm not really sure how this function works, but, well, I mean, that's basically it. That's our part. So we're going to have a screw coming in here. We're going to have these locking the whole thing in. So that's basically it for this video. And in the next one, we are going to put the two pieces together, constrain them so that one can pivot on the other, and we're going to see how everything fits.